Good morning, everybody. Hey, it's Jim Hoffman, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown, Kansas City. It is time for our daily devotion, and I want to invite you to come and join me as we begin our Facebook Live event. It's always a privilege and a, and a pleasure to be with you. I love these moments where we can spend together. It's a great break in the middle of my day uh, to be able to just spend time reading a little bit of scripture, an, a devotion, taking some time to think about it, share some reflections, and also these moments where we get to pray together. So I'm excited about this time that we have. I want to encourage you to come and join me. As you do, if you want to leave a quick comment, say hello. would appreciate you doing that. I will say hello back to you uh, as well. So looking forward to seeing all, who all uh, is here. And a quick reminder, if you watch this later on today, don't forget, leave a comment as well. They'll show up in my Facebook uh, notifications. They let me know who was here. And I always appreciate knowing that uh, it's great to see the number of people in our community and beyond who participate in our daily devotions. For today's reading, we're going to be in Romans chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. So I want to invite you to find your Bibles. Turn to Romans 15. We're going to read the first six verses. I'll announce that again here in a moment, but I'm just I'm watching and waiting to see uh, who all joins. So that's uh, what I'm doing at the moment. I was looking for something in particular a moment ago too, so I want to see if I can find it. You know, one of those things where you have a thought and you just need to do it right in the moment of that thought, <laughs> kind of thing. Hi, Jack. Good morning to you, sir. Great to have you today. Put a little note on my computer, something I need to finish. Jack, so far it's you and I. Romans chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. There will be others. A few of them are in the Tuesday morning Bible study, so. Romans 15, 1 to 6. All right, Jack, I think we'll go ahead and get started. All right, our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Again, Romans 15, verses 1 to 6. We who are strong ought to put up with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, our devotion writer today is Pamela Cheeseman. Pamela is from Kentucky, and her focus verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. In the NIV, it reads, The body is not made up of one part, but many. And here is her devotion. I began my first teaching position at Fort Knox, Kentucky as an English instructor for military recruits predominantly from Puerto Rico and South Korea. We focused not only on English skills, but also on the practical understanding of military terminology and materials. A few of my soldiers were married with children. One infantry soldier would soon report to his first duty station. 
on the morning of March 5, 1982, I mentioned to my students that it happened to be the World Day of Prayer. One student spoke up. Hey, teacher, sounds like you want to say a prayer. So we formed a circle and bowed our heads. I prayed for each of them to return safely to their families. As I finished, another student prayed in Spanish, followed by another praying in Korean. We all concluded with a resounding Amen. After we raised our heads, the silence and the brief glances of understanding sanctified the bond of fellowship among us. United in faith, we could see that the strength of prayer has in, was indeed universal. So the thought for the day is prayer unites me with Christians around the world. Um, I remember when I was in the service, uh, I had finished my tour in Crete and I was being cross-trained into a different, what they called Air Force Specialty Code or a different kind of job. And so I had to go back to Biloxi, Mississippi for six weeks. And for a short period of time, I had a roommate. And my roommate had formerly been in the Army, got out of the Army for a short period of time, and then decided to re-enlist, but this time he decided to enlist in the Air Force. And so he uh, had a few things that were a little quirky. They wear their name and insignia and different things like that a little differently. So I had to, had to share with him some things about uh, Air Force life that was different than Army life. But one of the things that was funny was is, um, he was Puerto Rican. And so it was interesting. Every once in a while, I'd hear him talk to his family back in Puerto Rico or his family that was in New Jersey where he was from, and he would speak Spanglish. So it'd be part English, part Spanish, part English, part Spanish, <laughs> you know? So you hear this kind of going on. I had lost track of that until um, Jordan started dating Karina, my daughter-in-law. Uh, she is also Puerto Rican descent. Um, and so when she's talking to her mom sometimes, or her sister, Carla, they go back and forth in Spanish and English. So they speak their Spanglish as well. Inevitably, though, you can kind of keep track and, and know some things. Um, it, it is fascinating that for us to understand and comprehend, we need our, we need our predominant language spoken, um, particularly so that we can follow along and track with the conversation that's going on. Uh, if you don't know Spanish or you don't know Korean or you don't know French or Italian or any of these others or even British English, <laughs> you may not be able to follow along with the conversation very well. But when we get to church, no matter what the language is, I think there is a rhythm and a movement that transpires that is there, that we are familiar with, and that the Spirit reminds us of. And there's parts of it that even though we may know it in English, you can hear it in a different language and you'll still know exactly what it is. I think of the doxology, right? Uh, I was listening yesterday to the service of remembrance for the Queen that was being held at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh. And they started singing a song that was to the tune of the doxology. It was early on in the service, which kind of felt a little out of place to me. But still, even though um, it was, it was still this song of thanksgiving. Um, it was a song of thanksgiving for the life of someone who had gone on. It just happened to be the tune of what we call the doxology. It was fascinating to be able to participate in that and listen to that, those moments and the words that were spoken from the readings of scriptures across the service to even the comments of, of the pastor who was preaching the, the homily. It reminded me that we're all part of this great body of Christ. When we say one Lord, one faith, one baptism, we Methodists believe that, even though we are in a little bit of our own denomination and we're secluded by it in some forms, uh, we also believe in the common universal church and the fact that we're part of a greater body of Christ, not just the body of Christ made known in United Methodist. And so when you hear these things, maybe you also are one who is reminded that we are people who are united in Christ with others around the world. That universal amen reminds us of who we are. So as you think about it today, maybe take an opportunity to pause and pray. And as you pray, pray for those around the world who worship God 
and um, who do so maybe in a different language than you. And maybe uh, just be reminded that we are a great worldwide expression of the body of Christ and God's love for all of us. Let's take a moment to pause and pray with those around the world today. So dear God, we ask that you guard us against all fear and instill in us the power of faith and hope. We thank you for the gift of our community that we are a part of, our intimate community. We thank you for a part of the broader church, your global community, that we are also a part of. In the body of Christ, make us one for the salvation of the world, we pray. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. Glad you made it as well. But I, I appreciate all of you being here today. I will look forward to being with you tomorrow for our devotion time. So I want to invite you to come and join me again at this normal time. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. Uh, and don't forget, post this on your own Facebook page if you would like. For those of you that watch it later, don't forget, leave a comment. Thanks, friends. Have a great day.